All right, hello, folks. Welcome to tonight's Wild Card Wednesday. I'm in Louisiana. Bonnie is in Florida, but he's got some background noise because kids are playing and having a good time. But you know, that's how that goes at 7.30 in the evening. And then uh, Jesse at Bumpy Road is in New Hampshire. So we got Northeast Coast, Southeast Coast, but really I think the Gulf Coast, and then, uh, but a Southeastern state. And then we have the Gulf Coast for sure here. And then uh, Brass Tax is joining us. And tell everyone what state you're from. Uh, North Georgia. North Georgia. Okay, so tonight, my beer, I mean, look, there's too much going on this week. I didn't bring anything special, but it's Wild Card Wednesday. And actually, you don't have to bring anything special. That's the parameters. You can bring anything, even natural ice. Introduced in 1995, 5.9% alcohol with the new label, sold in cans and bottles, and maybe on draft, this I do not know. So uh, going to the next state closest to me would be a coin flip. So let's go to Ronnie, what beer do you have? All right, I got the um, Guayabara Citra Pale Ale by Cigar City. I've had some of their beers when I was down in Florida. I usually buy them at like Trader Joe's. Yeah. I bought this at Publix. You ever hear of that uh, supermarket? Yes. Yes, I've been in there many times. And some of the Publix have their own liquor store attached to the store. Well, they got a whole aisle, long aisle of just wine. Yeah. I was very pleased. I think it's the largest grocery chain in the United States at this time. Really? Uh-huh. It's not big up north. I don't think there's any up there. No, it's huge down here, uh, at least in your area. There was talk that they would come to Louisiana, but something, I don't know, it was some kind of. Uh, all right, uh, now brass tax. We're going to get down to brass tax, people. He's in Georgia. And what are you bringing tonight? I found these at my local place. Uh, it's Stone IPA, but it's like a tall boy can, and yeah. they're selling them for $1.75. Which is a pretty darn good deal. I would say so. And uh, I haven't seen those yet, but I've seen a lot of those stove type stove pipe cans around. So I would not be shocked if it showed up here. Oh, look, and I'm clicking and they're showing a Stella Artois commercial. <laughs> look at that. And it's got somebody with his, he's, it's a girl, a lady with her feet in a little blow up pool. And they're sitting in the shade and they're drinking Stella Artois. Sounds about right. Yeah. And uh, now, Jesse, Bumpy Road Brewery up there. What are you drinking tonight? Well, uh, from the great state of Maine, from Mast Landing Brewing Company, I have Gunner's Daughter Milk Stout. Comes oh. in at 5.5% ABV and it has. Uh, it says everybody's favorite word, stout brewed with natural flavors, but it is uh, peanut butter coffee and dark chocolate. Hey, well, you know, I mean, that's what's that's where we are now. I mean, um, it's got that's if it's macro, middle, crow, micro flavored beers, this is it, you know? And I make little jokes in videos like, oh, play a game called try to find a beer without flavoring. I mean, of course you can, but, you know, it's just, it's so common. Uh, that's one of those adhesive label beers, huh? Uh, on the can, like the labels. Yeah, it's, it's a sticker that wraps around you. Yeah. yeah. We're going to uh, read comments in a little bit. Let me look up something on tap into your beer. I want to, whoops, wrong website. I want to uh, read the ingredients from Natural Ice. Now, remember, natural came out in 1977, and their whole point was that it was natural. It, it didn't have ingredients like those Miller beers. There was kind of a scandal in the public where uh, somebody exposed, probably somebody paid by hand, but exposed that Miller Lite had all kind of these crazy ingredients in it, unnatural ingredients and additives. So then very quickly, natural ice, natural light came out, and their whole their whole selling point was we don't have any of those. It's just, uh, you know, beer ingredients, water, barley, malt, hops, yeast, and 
natural cereal grains, which we know what that means. Okay, uh, well, let's see right here real fast. Natural ice here. Oh, you know, we all know about the ice crystal process. 130 calories. This is what I like about this beer. It's only 130 calories. The strange thing about their website is they're showing the old bottle, the previous bottle design with the horse collar on it. Strange that they wouldn't have updated it, but whatever. The ingredients are water, corn, corn syrup, barley malt, rice, hops, hop extract, and malt extract. So this is a multi-grain beer. <laughs> um, and I think they tell you that drink multi, eat multi-grain products. Okay, we're gonna read, I promise we're gonna read their comments. Okay, so then, uh, Ronnie, you don't have your ingredient line up, but um, we know you have, tell us a little bit about it. Um, I already started drinking it. It's good, I like it a lot. It's got fruitiness to it, I think. It's Guayabera is some kind of um, fruit from Latin America. Yeah. It's, uh, it's brewed with citra hops. It imparts notes of tangerine, lime. So if you smell it, you're pretty much getting all that stuff. I mean, they're pretty on point with what they're saying. All these fruity smells to it. Um, it's not an IPA. It's a citra pale ale. And uh, the taste. By the way, I don't have it in the glass because um, no glass allowed around the pool. Yeah, it makes sense. Nice crisp finish. Tasty beer. I'd recommend it. Okay. I'll hold off on my rating. Okay. Oh, and by the way, we had all kind of, there was all kind of flooding in New Orleans today. I was looking at these videos when I was at work, people were showing the French Quarter looked like a, like instead of a street, it looked like Venice, like a canal. And then uh, Canal Street was literally a canal this time. And they had somebody swimming down the Canal Street um, and all kind of people's houses got flooded. I said, boy, boy, boy. And that was not even the tropical storm hit. That was just a big rainstorm. Now they're worried because the river is going to get so high. They're thinking that the Mississippi River might start coming over the top of the levee. <laughs> and that would be kind of scary to go and see the water coming over the top. That would be a bad indication of it. Yeah, it's no good. Especially, yeah, and, I, and my house is less than a mile from the river. Maybe it's about a half a mile. I can hear the boats in the river all day long. Um, and so I might go walk over there tomorrow and see how high it really is. They said it could like be even with the top. So when you see the boats coming by, you could see the ship, the whole ship, like not like the top poles or something. You see the whole boat. <laughs> That's kind of, you know what I mean? That means it's <laughs> all right. Um, when, when you go Ron, you should bring your floaties though, just in case. Right, because uh, <laughs> put it to you like that. Put it to you like this: if that if that levy gives way, you won't be worrying about Louisiana beer reviews anymore, or maybe Louisiana. All right, uh, to a large extent. Um, so now we go to brass tax and what? It, what tell us about your beer and how you're enjoying it. <sighs> I was talking to the guy who I became kind of friends with at my local liquor store. And when the New England IPAs came out, I was really big on them, but I kind of got tired of them. And lately I've been wanting like a really piney IPA, kind of yeah. like harkens back to the West Coast style IPAs. Right. And Stone IPA, I think, really holds strong to that West Coast piney kind of pine tar flavor. Really strong, like hot Wait. forward. It's pine, pine tar or pine oil? Tar? Both. That might be like a Georgia thing, like pine tar. You know when you're like climbing up a pine tree, like pine sap maybe? Is it oh, yeah. Saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know that aroma, you know? Like, smell like 
turpentine almost turpentine yeah that's like a good good way to describe it and uh it's really good i think i'm gonna after this have a sierra nevada pale ale it just kind of harkens back to like older ipas that i really enjoy isn't the sierra nevada pale like the first considered ipa i think it came out like 88 or 89 but yeah it's. i think earlier than that really i think it was like 1980 or 80 yeah 80 Pale ale, yeah, not India, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty famous. And then they had the Liberty Ale from a uh, uh, anchor, mm-hmm. and that was 1975, you know. Uh, so that was really the original. But um, um, okay. So uh, Jesse, what about yours? And then we'll come around and do scores. Oh yeah, let me pour it. I'm gonna pour, and uh, got the the Turtle Man, Irish Man. Guinness stout glass that he sent over. So, all right. Uh, so it does have a tight, uh, kind of khaki brown colored head. Um, body color is a fairly medium to dark brown, and the aromas. First thing I get is peanut butter. It's almost like. Peter Pan peanut butter. And then there is a bit of a coffee note that comes up too. Pretty robust, uh, pretty robust aromas. Same thing in the, in the flavors. It kind of goes through that, that peanut butter coffee. Get some uh, chocolate in there as well. Uh, it's kind of on the thinner side for a uh, for a stout on the body, and uh, carbonation is about medium. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's full of flavor. It's very sweet, and there is there is some some bitterness at the tail end. Kind of leads into that, like darker chocolate type bitterness. Is it a nitro or is it a CO two? Oh, yeah, it's a CO two. Okay. Here's a. Here's a jar of Peter Pan peanut butter. Yep. <laughs> Good bell. I want to smell it so I can get the idea. I've never oh, had yeah. Peter Pan peanut butter. It's you never good. have? Oh yeah, it's good. If you, it, it's 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 nice. Uh, it's from our friends at Con Agra. You know, Consolidated Agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> it's very creamy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So you're enjoying it, huh, Jesse? But you find it's a little too porterish in the body? It's um yeah, it's got kind of a light a lighter feel to the body. Um I think uh it, it could use some more creaminess, definitely, especially being a milk stout. Um and then that's just the the flavors, like I said, it it is this comes off like a dessert stout, like so. It's it's pretty, pretty sweet. I mean, there is a there is a, a decent amount of bitterness afterwards, but yeah, when you have it in your mouth, it's like some type of peanut butter pie or something with chocolate oh. and coffee. That sounds something like something I would like to eat or drink. <laughs> <laughs> I got a message while y'all were talking from. The power company saying our crews are preparing. You should too. <laughs> Talking about this storm, you know. Oh, Maybe there's the bell by paying your electric bill. What's up, John? Uh, Good yeah. evening, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? So beverage ramble, people. That's the hello, bell. Hello. Hope y'all had a wonderful Fourth of July. It was nice. It was, it was pretty good. Good. Awesome. Now, John, John, before you start talking, I'm going to tell, tell them about my beer because um, I don't have much left. And it's 130 calories, so you can guzzle it like crazy, you know. All right. And I, have no, I have no air conditioning, so, you know, I'm going to want to drink faster. Now, it yeah. has a nice little hop profi- profile. Like, if you drank this beer and you were honest, you could not say... It's got no hops. It's got. It does. It's not a totally round beer. It's not totally round. There's a little hop action at the end of each sip. I mean, 
we have to look at that in a rel relative sense. But it has the little character there. It's got a uh, kind of a light at the most medium body. It's sweet. It's to me. I don't know if any other ice beer can rival rival it. But of course, if I drank Keystone Ice, I'd be saying yeah. that about ice. Keystone so, Ice is a good one. <laughs> yeah. I think so. That's what you're drinking tonight. I thought you liked Bud Ice a lot too. Do you, do you prefer that over Bud Ice even? It's like a big old tie. Um, I think Keystone's the best one. Yeah. You know what I like about this also? I can get a 15 pack for $7.99. So $7.99. Yeah. 15 pack. $6.95 at the Dollar General. They'll have those specials once in a while. That and Natty Ice and Keystone Light and Natural Light. We don't get those kind of deals over here. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, Which one? I'm, Keystone? I'm going to take a step and then I'm going to score it. And then we're going to go to Jean. I'm going to read. As soon as Jean talks, I'm going to read those comments. All right. Mm. Ah. Crisp, clean, and refreshing. It's got that little twang to it, which some people hate with ice beards and other people love. I recognize it's there. I don't know if I like it or hate it, but I, I, it's there, and I, I don't mind. I've been drinking on this 15-pack uh, for some days now, and um, I've been interchanging it with Keystone Ice. Like, I, I, I drink one and the other. So when I got home from work today, I drank the Keystone Ice, you see. Oh, oh excuse me. <laughs> now, Jean Pierre, you talk, and then I'm going to read comments. I know you're eating that hot dog, and it looks good. Yeah. Having a Koneka sausage uh, with uh, some uh, with uh, spicy brown mustard and sauerkraut and some onions. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah like very, very tasty. And what goes well with it, of course, is from 1846, Pat PBR. Nice. 1844. Okay, yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Pardon me. Off Come by on, two John. Come on. <laughs> 1844. <laughs> yes, the uh, infamous PBR. Uh, again, I um, uh, paid uh, for a four pack of this 16 ounce can, paid $344 plus tax. Came up to about four bucks and change at the Greer's Cash Saver. I uh, call it the pay for more store, cost plus 10%. That's another topic for another day. But I'd said, you know, I just got off work and I said, you know what? You know what? I haven't had PBR in a while. Why not? So, um, great flavor. Uh, 4.7 uh, ABV. Am I correct on this one? Yes, it's 4.74. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that? Okay. Rounded to 4.73. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, overall, great beer. A lot of very hop flavor on this beer for whatever the reason. I, I, I don't know if y'all noticed that if y'all do drink PBR from time to time, but um, I, I, I just think it's a, it's a really good, well made lager. Uh, that still has remained a consistent. It, it hasn't changed at all. And um, again, I, I just remember that movie, uh, Blue Velvet, when Dennis Hopper, you know, smacks the guy, said, "Who is Heineken?" Don't make a direct quote, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, come on, PBR, yeah, that's the beer, <laughs> real beer. So it's he a go-to beer. He said, "He said uh, Heineken. I don't. Pro I don't." I don't want Heineken. I prefer Paps Blue Ribbon. You guys, it, I think that's what he said. Um, yeah. Of course, a smack in the face to the other guy. So yeah, but yeah, it's definitely a go-to beer. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and good. That's the, the that's a, I'm, you heard me, Sean. I made a, a direct quote from that movie. Right. He said Heineken. That's not the beer I prefer. You guys, I would rather drink Paps Blue Ribbon. I let think he said another term, but this is a family show, so we won't let go me there. tell you right now. All right, um, <laughs> I like Pabst Blue Ribbon's Carlsberger yeast winey flavor too, you know. But like, like, like Ronnie's saying, it's a real uh, copacetic type item, you know. This is a family show. <laughs> I don't, don't know. I was saying that there's a, another term in the movie yeah, he really said, true. but we won't we won't say that name. Yeah, we we say that know. word. This is a family yeah. show. Everybody gets around the TV. <laughs> at least you, at least you brought your kids to the pool, Ronnie. So <laughs> I, think could, I think families could sit around the television and watch this this broadcast because uh, it's about beverages and just like children and their family. 
the mother and the father and the children would sit around in 1979 and watch Canon, and then they would on CBS, and then they would see commercials for uh, for um, PBR, Al Masan wine, and uh, hey, <laughs> and the children would say, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be like Orson Welles and drink Paul Masson wine, and then Daddy would say. Well, mm -hmm. well, Theodore, let me tell you, one day you just might do that. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to read the comments. If you say Budweiser, you said it all. Of course, those commercials were also popular. So. Oh, yes, I remember that. All right, Glib Talk says, good evening, gents. Good evening to you, GT. CS says, batting down the hatches, Ronald. Yeah, I'm not too concerned about this storm. My friend David with the big beard was kind of like telling me, are you drunk? He said, are you drunk? Are you loaded? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're not taking this seriously. This is serious. I said, I don't think it's too serious, really. But um, we're going to get a lot of rain. Um, we're getting yeah, the same yeah. warnings here in Mobile. Mostly rain we're going to get, I think. A lot of rain. So. Yeah, he's getting really agitated. You know, I was saying, well, he said, you're just joking around. Like, you think this is not serious. I said, well, I mean, I'm sorry. You know, I mean, I, I don't. I always had that bad attitude like that. Okay, Craig Swenson says the only stone I'll drink is a keystone, and yes, it's because of their stupid lawsuit. Oh, Cobra, Cobra says, "How's it going, Ron?" Well, it's going pretty well. Uh, I did my albums last night because I was so bored. Now, um, but I did like the, the videos. You know, uh, CS says seriously, I hope the best for you folks on the Gulf Coast. <laughs> I'm drinking my last Pabst Blue Ribbon right now. Craig says, tonight I'm having a couple of 24 ounce, a couple of 24 ounce cans of Labatt Blue Light, really good, and only 139 a can. Honestly, I didn't really care for that beer, but. Um, um, we're, we're, it, it, I'm sure that's probably available up in the north, uh, northeast area, because. Yeah, um, I bought it in New York City. I bought that. I bought, I bought it in the Bronx, Jean. Okay. Yeah, I, I got a trip to New Jersey store. coming up. Yeah. I bought it at 7 Eleven in the Bronx. I can even I could I could tell you what store it was. Johnny Neely says, I'm running late, guys. Almost home. Now I'll join if you're still on. I should be home in five. Sorry, work was crazy today. And well, we understand it. <coughs> he says, Peter Pan is the best peanut butter, in my opinion. Well, I'm not saying it's the best. I enjoy Peter Pan. I work with I like Peter Jiffy. Senator, you're no Peter Pan. I, I like it. Oh, Jiff. Oh. Jiffy, I love Jiffy. Jiffy Creamy. Yeah, cho choosy moms, they choose Jiff. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about J Jean Pierre. I don't know about Jiffy peanut butter because I never heard of that. I've heard of Jiff. I mean, Jiff, 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 Jiff. Yeah. yeah, there's Skippy. Skippy peanut butter right. it has that kind of like aqua blue greenish right. labeling. And then there's Jiffy cornbread mix, but I don't. Subject Zero yeah. says air conditioning is not necessary. When I grow up, I want to be like Jean Henderson Pierre. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> Look, subject zero, I agree. Air conditioning is not necessary. I can survive without it. I mean, I made it through the night. I was miserable, you know, and I hated sleeping in a bed where I was sweat, covered with sweat, and my bed was wet from sweat. But, yeah, I mean, I could get used to it. I would hate it. But I'm, I paid the man $5,000 yesterday to come fix it and install it. Now, that's what, that's what I did. Yeah, that happened to my family like a month ago. And we had to get a new uh, condenser and coil. And all said and done, it was about 4200 bucks like out the door. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, brass text. The guy told me, he said, I mean, my air conditioner is from 1991. True story. 28 years old. And it's still... Are you haven't changed that AC unit out yet? Wow. Yeah. Well, he was saying... Uh, he said, I can fix it. It'll work. I mean, I can, it was working Monday night. He said, I can fix it. All right? The more you want, the more money you're putting in, you know, it's like... He said, but it's not worth it. He said, it's not worth it because it could just break. It's going to keep breaking. You know, every, all the parts are going to break. He said, it just... He said, if it was me, I'd buy a new one. And I said, yeah, and of course, he's a salesman. He wants to sell it. But he, he, 
I said, yeah, you're right. And my father was on the phone saying, buy a new one. What's wrong? You know, buy a new one. But my father always buys new everything. He's he loves to uh, buy and only only new products. <laughs> and, but he always goes to the extreme, buys the most advanced and most expensive one he can get. Oh, Which, um, Lee Iacocca, if you could find a better car, buy it. You know, it's kind of that, that little term right there. So right. And to be fair, uh, to be fair, the five that. Yep, I used to like those Lee Iacocca commercials. We're gonna get the scores right coming up. To be fair, the five thousand bucks is the total job with the furnace and the AC and and, and labor and everything. Now the guy did offer me some cheaper models uh, that were not Ream, other brands. He said they're okay, but he said Ream is the best that I sell. So it's up to you. He said you get what you pay for, though. Really, honestly, I said I'll just go ahead and do it. You know, heck. All right. So that's the story on that. But um, but it was kind of hitting me kind of hard because I, I paid for the new Ram last year. You all remember that, right? And then the new roof two months ago and now the new AC. So it uh, gets a little irritating putting all that money down. Uh, 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 but it is nice to have the money to put down, though, I got to say. Now, um, we got John and Nile who said he was getting so irritated from having, we have to work people. We have to work for a living. And sometimes it's so irritating and hard to do, but we must do it because you have to, you have to work for a living now. Um, uh, but I'm going to get scores from the other guys before we go to John and Nile. So Jean-Pierre disappeared inexplicably, but he does that. Ronnie, what score do you give your beer? I'm giving mine an, a ninety, a ninety-three, a ninety-three, an A, getting into the A. I used to say A minus, but now I'm ready to say A. Okay, Ronnie. Ninety-five. Oh, bazam! Now, uh, brass tacks. What do you score? I know what I would score a stone. I know. Ninety-six. Yeah. 96. Uh -huh. I love Stone IPA. It's a solid A, isn't it? Yeah, 96. 96. If you, had, if you had to drink that every day for the rest of your life, you wouldn't get bored, would you? No. No. Where did you get the stone at? Um, did you um is, you got the twenty you got the twenty four ounce cans or the uh bottles? I got you the got one the pint cans, which is one pint three point two ounces. I don't know what that means. It's nineteen point two ounces. But, uh, okay, so I live in a dry county, so the only place you can buy alcohol is at a liquor store, and the place was called Appalach Appalachian Beverage. Okay. okay. Welcome to North Georgia. You can only buy alcohol at, at a liquor store, and you can't buy any liquor. What part of Georgia are you at? Where, how, what's, what's the nearest big city, you know, there? Well, I'm like an hour and a half north of Atlanta, probably 30 minutes south of uh, Chattanooga. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I'd give it a solid A, 90, 95, okay. 96. You must be close to interstate. You must be close to interstate 75. Okay. North of that, but yeah. North of it. Okay. Um, 75 is the highway closest to me. Okay, a spur highway, a spur highway. Okay. So now, uh, Jesse, what do you score yours? Well, you know I do the 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 odd one here. Yeah. For the scoring. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty much. Uh, appearance, I gave it a five out of uh, six, uh, just because the head um, aroma I thought was fantastic. Ten out of ten. The flavor on it. It had all the flavors. It's just the body. It's it's yeah. It's just uh, too much, too much sweetness for me a little bit, and uh, just the uh, the body was a bit thin too. But uh, flavor seventeen out of nineteen. The body I gave a three out of five, and my overall. Now this isn't something I actually buy again for myself, but for being a one time like try. I mean, it, it had it had all the flavor notes that they were saying it was going to have. So I mean, they, they did a great job with that. Um, so an eight out of ten for the overall. Which gives it a bumpy score of a forty-three out of fifty, which lands it in an excellent beer range. 
and that doesn't exactly correlate to like an 86 out of 100. It no. would be further up in the 90s, actually, kind of. Right. If it was, but low, lower scale 90 out of 100, basically. We're going to talk about that again on August. Right. Well, if if we can do hangouts, <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, I don't really care what kind of parameters people use as long as they're consistent with it. As long as you're consistent with it, then it really doesn't matter. You know, if your A right. is this and your B is that and your C is that and your D is that and your F is that. And we all know what those mean. Excellent, good, fair, poor and undrinkable. And as long as you follow that, that um, template, it shouldn't be a problem. And I'm eating some peanut butter. I couldn't resist. And I'm feeling it. That's Peter Pan. Cause you talked about Peter Pan, so it made me. Okay, now, John, yeah. and, John and Neil A. It's going to run through his. I don't mean rush through it. He's going to run through it. We're going to read scores. I mean, uh, <laughs> comments later, but he's got. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'll uh, go through it quickly here. I know I'm late to the party. Um, so I've got one from Full Cell Brewing Company out of Hood River, Oregon. Never had it before. This is their malted milkshake style IPA. Oh, oh man. Point eight percent alcohol. IBUs are not listed. I didn't have time to go to the website or anything. It yeah. says on the side of the label here, ale with natural vanilla flavor. <laughs> we were just talking about flavors. I was, yeah, I was listening. It seemed, yeah, everything's uh, flavored these days. It poured um, very hazy. Can't see through it. It had a nice head, two or three finger head that's kind of settled a little bit, but there's still a good bit left. Some nice beginnings of lacing there's a lot of stuff in here a lot of thick sediment um yeah. like big chunks <laughs> anyway hazy orange color it smells really good you're getting um definitely like a new england style ipa the tropical fruits mango pie, definitely pineapple some tangerine and then maybe a little bit of the vanilla as well. I think maybe the vanilla will come through more on the palate. I oh. guess that's one of the reasons, too. They call it milkshake IPA because of the vanilla. They're kind of maybe more of a creamy mouthfeel. I don't think it has lactose in it. It doesn't say, but anyway, uh, it smells really good. So cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers. Two thumbs up. <laughs> cheers to John. It, and it's from Oregon. And what's the ABV again, John? 6.8%. Um, and honestly, I don't even know if the website, if it doesn't say anything about a website on the label, but if they do have a website, they probably don't list the IBUs anyway. It seems like more breweries just keep getting away from that for whatever reason. Um, maybe they don't want to scare people, but <laughs> not, not as high with this style. Um, it's not really that bitter. You're getting a lot of the hot flavor. Uh, but it's not a super bittering finish. You're getting, you know, mango, pineapple. It's got a really nice breadiness in the middle of the sip. Some nice white bread notes. Um, really enjoyable, actually. I thought I was not going to be too happy with all the chunks in there, but I'm not really – it's not bothering me. Uh, it does have a very thick mouthfeel, though, which obviously I think they were going for that with the milkshake IPA label there. I missed Full Sail beers. We used to get their beers a lot, and I used to really enjoy them. And then it just they all disappeared from our market, and it's disgusting to me. Yeah, I just picked a, a single up uh, and a pick-your-own six-pack. We have this little supermarket here that has a lot of variety. It's called uh, the Little Giant farmer's market and you can take any beer out of any six pack that ends in 99 and make your own six pack that's like crazy it. man that's, I, that's I, yeah, it was, it's a pretty good deal so there were a bunch of six packs you know with like three or four beers in there they just kind of let you have at it um good. so I, good i'm good. very pleased about that that's the only place in georgia uh, in my part of georgia anyway that you can go to and do that the Publix and Kroger, you can create your own six packs, but it's limited to what they have in that section. Really? Like, for uh, example, like, for example, John, if you take a six pack, let's say a six pack of the 
Budweiser Discover or maybe a, a Modelo, it, that's not allowed. But it, it has to be something from their little area, whatever it is. Yeah, you but know, I mean, well, you, you could always just, if they're not paying attention, you can just take one out and stick it in. There. Well, yeah, but I don't, I'm not going to do that. That's I, yeah, In the public's by me. I, I didn't see um the pick six, the one down here. The Greer's Cast Ever does that in my town that, you know, if you take something out of a, of a you know, a, a, you know, Budweiser Select 55, whatever to do your own six pack, you know, no, it has to be in that area where all those six packs, all those. Yeah, but how are they going to know? Are Nobody's there, really paying attention. That case, and go ahead, do your own six pack. Yeah. But anyway, they encourage that at this store. And uh, I won't go too long here. This is right up my alley when it comes to IPAs. I like the thick, creamy mouthfeel. The, the little bit of vanilla kind of uh, balances out some of the bitterness, even though it's really not that bitter. And I like the tropical fruit notes that I'm getting from the hops versus the piney resinous stuff that you get with the West Coast IPA. So this is really good uh, for me. I, you know, my, my personal um, favorite when it comes to, to this or, you know, to IPAs is this style. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a 95 out of 100. It's a solid A, and I would highly recommend it. Um, and, of course, 6.8% alcohol, no booziness at all. The alcohol is masked well. Um, so it's a winner. I would highly recommend it if you can find it in your area. So oh, I would love to try it. But, you know, Full sale has sailed away from Louisiana. All right. It says non dead guy, dead guy ale still in the area, I'm sure. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's still around. Kind of dead though. Non fermentable. Okay, it says milk sugars provide a full body smooth creaminess while the yeast strain creates a hazy fruit forward beer. Big juicy flavor and big juicy hops stand out in our new malted milkshake style IPA brewed with Equinot, Denali, Comet, Citra, and Cascade hops and two row pale wheat and oats. A touch of the natural vanilla is the proverbial cherry on top. And it's 6.8% alcohol, and it's 40 international bitterness units. And it's sold year-round. All right. Sounds good. Thanks yeah. for looking. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. And uh, it has won awards from some minor, minor... Uh, well, let's see here. Yeah, kind of minor competitions. Less well-known. It might be credible competitions. Um, the the, the uh, comments, I'm going to read those if y'all don't mind. I don't mind. Do it. And then we'll, not, we'll get off of here pretty soon. Uh, Jeremy Vincent said, cheers. I didn't realize there would be a wild card Wednesday today. Been swimming. Well, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> well, well, today is Wednesday, Jeremy. It is Wednesday. Jake Daniel says, how about a Taste Town Shiner Premium versus Dixie Lager? That's not I know a bad idea. I did a premium beer. That's actually, not a, that's actually not a bad idea. What? I know Shiner did a premium beer. Oh, yeah. I can, I can show you a can in here. Uh, uh, it's, it's like in the middle, right? What you mean? Like it's in the middle of like a non premium and premium. Shiner? Like wouldn't you say? It's kinda like a full sale and and uh a beta and it's just like craft beer that's common. Craft what is a premium beer? A more expensive beer? It doesn't really mean anything. It means whatever the company wants it to mean. I agree. Um, have you all tried the Shiner Mexican uh beer with the agave on it? No. Okay. <laughs> it has some agave flavor. and um, I've seen it. I saw yeah. it, but I didn't want to buy a whole 12 pack. Yeah. I, I, I had it. I bought it at the my hookup store. Wink, wink. And, uh, and uh, st uh, for whatever the reason, I, I wasn't too enamored with it. It was 4.5 ABV, and I wasn't too high on that beer. It tasted like... It didn't really have that agave flavor. I think that the 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 the, the, the malts and the and the barley kind of overtook it more so. You know, it was I thought it was kind of bland in my opinion. I wanted to try but, it when I was at Rouse's, but it was no way I was buying a twelve pack. I, I don't blame you, man. Don't blame you. Now I'm gonna read a few comments. 
more, and then I'll be done with comments. Natty Island, Island Natty, I mean, Island Natty says, Ronnie, what's up? You ever listen to Bob Marley music? Have I? <laughs> Do you ever listen to Bob Marley music, he asks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Jeremy Vincent says, I'm sending Jean a phone tripod. I don't think I've ever met Brash yet. Yeah, he's new, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's Please. Appreciate it. Not, yeah, he's not new to watching our videos. He's just new to doing the Hangouts. But I'm glad he joined. Bart Robinson, Bart Robinson says, hey, guys, cracking an old Milwaukee ice, which we can't get. Uh, hey. Georgia. I think Georgia. I I know yeah, there's I one for really North Carolina, too. Old Milwaukee yeah. ice. I was, I was drinking that. I was at a bus station, but uh, on the mega bus station, there was a there was a, a store not far from the um uh, uh the uh the uh the train station at the Civic Center, um in, in Atlanta, and I was able to get a can of Old Milwaukee ice. I need to go back there and get it again. But are you in, are you in Atlanta pretty often? Nice. I wouldn't hold your breath, John. I don't I don't think it's sold anywhere not, around here anymore. Wow, man, darn! I don't know like North Georgia where brass brass is, but it, it definitely ain't sold around here or in any parts of Atlanta that I've been to. Man, mm -hmm. it's all over Georgia, pretty much. Like I, that's one of my favorite ice beers. <laughs> that's that's I live, I live, I live I like, like twenty miles south of Atlanta. It ain't in my town, and it ain't anywhere that I've been to. And I, I've looked. The only time I've ever had it was when I went up to North Carolina. Oh, nice! You're you're how far from South Atlanta? I'm in Noonan, Georgia. I don't know if you know where that is. Noonan. Yeah, we, uh, we have some hunting property there. I'm originally from Griffin, Georgia. Oh, okay. I Yeah, I, I work out in Griffin sometimes. I go out there a lot. So Yeah, I yeah. do business trips in Griffin. Like uh, That's where I'm from originally. Oh, okay, cool. Jeremy Vincent says, John, John, John. Nice, Bart. And then Masan, Tom's, Mason, Tom says, hmm, malted milkshake. Interesting. Andy Paschke says, Old Milwaukee Ice? Dang. Jeremy Vincent says, Beer with natural ice cream licked flavor. <laughs> oh, no. Let's not, let's not go there. <laughs> Jeremy Vincent says, Nice, John. And then Bart Robinson says, Hey, Jeremy, yes, Old Milwaukee Ice is my is a gem, in my opinion. But we can't get it. 16 ounce country club on the standby laughing out loud. Jeremy Vincent says, Hate Michael isn't here to hear about the mango notes and John's beer. Laugh out loud. Um, yeah, I Michael, too. Michael had to do something. Peter Booty Judge said, Oh, we got Pete Booty Judge. Pete Booty Judge. Sorry about the train, guys. Pete Booty Judge. Says a milkshake IPA. That sounds interesting. I would certainly try it if I can find it. Deanna Scott says one of the best beer companies that went out of business was to form a wicked beer company. I used to like Pete's Wicked Ale and all that. A, a beer company went out of business today, this very day. I think Wicked is not still around. Wasn't it Pete's Wicked Ale and all that? It's gone, isn't it? Uh, well, there's there's something that's, that's still called Wicked. Well, there's there's like red. There's Reds makes a Wicked line, and then there's Wicked Weed, but there's not. Wicked, Wicked Weed, that, that's the one I saw. I saw yeah. that actually. Too. Different, yeah, yeah, different company. There's an apple yeah. cider Wicked, too, I think, like an apple cider company that makes Wicked something or another. Jeremy Vincent said, probably can't get it here. Might have to go to McDonald's and get a milkshake and pour a stone IPA in it. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy's the comedian tonight. Do that. The comedian tonight. Maxwell says, hello, Ron, and hello, all. Hello to you, Maxwell, over there in the Russian Federation. Jeremy says, but my luck, the ice cream machine is down as always. Ha ha. Yeah, you ever notice that? Um, hi, Maxwell. Southern Dip Review says, good afternoon. Stay dry with this storm. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to stay dry. Giant Space Monkey. Oh, Giant Space Monkey from the Empire, the Empire State. He says, what the world needs is a mango ice beer for Michael. <laughs> oh, Giant Space Monkey, you are such a comedian. Uh, Jeremy Vincent says, ha ha, I agree, GSM. Now, y'all, you know what, y'all? I, I tried a new whiskey this week. And I'm going to post a review probably Sunday morning, very early in the morning. I'll show you real fast what it is. I Can figured that's what it was because I saw you posted a, an ad on uh, alcohol eggs. Yeah, you can, you, you, you've caught on to my pattern of behavior. Uh, 
Well, uh, you know, it's ten ninety nine, and uh, I was pleased with it. I wasn't like overwhelmed by it, but I was pleased with it. Beam Suntory brand these days. Was there a celebrity that promoted that uh, Windsor? No, I don't think so. I don't think Windsor Canadian has received too much promotion over the years. They used to have this little uh, mounty character. Ron's a celebrity. Ron's a celebrity. Yeah, so starting, Sunday, starting Sunday, there'll be a celebrity promoting it. But, um, um, baseball, it was a popular... Uh, there were some professional baseball players that were in some of the old ads, I think, right? Windsor Canadian? Wasn't the one you posted on Alcohol Legs? Didn't it have, like, baseball... Like, a baseball player on it? Gary Carter from when he played for the Expos, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe that was a different one. I do remember. It had, Mountie, it had a Mountie, like, and stuff. I don't know. I, a baseball player? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, looking, I'm looking it up on Alcohol Likes here because you posted it this morning. Yeah. Yeah, there was some celebrity um, involvement, but that didn't last. And then once Beam Suntory bought it, the whole advertising promotion ended. But anyway, people didn't watch this to hear about whiskey. I'm just showing you what I've been. Yeah, gonna... great. Yeah, it says buy the bottle, steal the plate. Great legends. George Herman Ruth. Babe Ruth. It's got Babe Ruth on, on the uh, on the ad. Oh, that's some kind of thing you could get. Not Babe Ruth endorsing it, but you could get some baseball. If it was like a sweepstakes you could join. You know how it is companies have these things and by the way i never have gotten my eight dollars back from diageo where's my rebate um you <laughs> know about um tolly savalas you know black velvet oh, yeah i tried that, that's so, velvet, yeah. so the ad, so the, ad the ad says if you bought a bottle back in 1989 uh for only 12.95 <laughs> you're entered to win box seats at the world series for that year <laughs> nice so anyway, that's that's what it was. Sorry, and you I got just a free in. Yeah, you got a free earthquake thrown in. Um, <laughs> that was the year. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. Nineteen oh, oh, boy, nineteen eighty one, eighty nine, eighty nine. Yeah. Oh yes. Heroes, the born. Giants, and the A's. Yes. The heroes born. Yep. The earthquake series. Great show, guys. Thanks, Ron. Says Jeremy. I'm sipping on a thirty two ounce of Miller right now. Says Southern Dip. Well, good, everybody. Well, we don't need to go on too long, um, but uh, I appreciate everybody joining. I had an A beer. Uh, Ronnie has an A. Brass Tax had mm -hmm. an A. Jean-Pierre. Uh, my beer is an A. Uh, I love PBR. Um, it's just as oh, yeah. it's an American classic, you know, 1844. It, it has not changed. Some say it tastes like a little bit of sh a champagne flavor to it or a wine flavor to it. I think it's just a really good uh, – it has a little bit more of a hop flavor, but uh, it's just one of those standard American lagers that just has stayed true to what it was. First time I had PBR was 1997. Wow. Uh, and I only had it in 96. I only got you beat by one year. Yeah. And uh, 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 Bumpy had an A. In his viewpoint of it, I had an A with like the left leg broken off of it. Yeah, a minus. A wo wobbly A. An A minus. <laughs> right. Right. An he a broke the, the A's kneecaps. We're still in the A's, but one A got kind of slapped around a little bit, and then, <laughs> and then John and Neil A. Yeah, I, I give it a ninety-five. It's a solid A. It's excellent. So we had What's the name of that one again, John? Malted Milkshake Style IPA from Full Cell Brewing Company out of Oregon. Yes. Oh, Malted man. Milkshake IPA, yeah. So Not every beer we tried tonight was excellent or most excellent. And three of the beers we tried tonight did not even have flavoring. And they still were excellent. <laughs> Imagine that. Beer without flavoring can still be excellent. That is just so weird. Well, all the ones that had flavoring were A's too, though. Yeah, that's true. Right, I know. I'm just classic out. American lager, EBR. Yes, flavor, flavor, flavor. I can't say anything about flavor beers because every 
know, you know, you watch my channel. You know, I'm always throwing up these flavored beers. <laughs> the yeah, the green ones and the, the pink ones. Right. I have no room to talk. And then I'll talk about them and bash them and make fun of them and ridicule them. And then I'll still give it a high score, you know. So that's all just – that's just – It's all a game, Ron. It's all a game. It's a psychological <laughs> game, friends. All right. But um, it's a fun game. Uh, well, join me tomorrow morning early, early, early for Dawn, actually. Dawn Busters. Tomorrow we're going to do Dawn Busters. Uh, in the uh, exciting world of American blended whiskey. Oh, boy. Now, um, if you're feeling bad tomorrow morning, watch that video and you're going to be feeling even worse. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Any last comp? <laughs> um, As you joining you guys for the first time, thanks for letting me on. Anytime, Brad. Oh, Thank yeah, man. Anytime, Brad, man. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, nice tax, yeah, watch out for those tax. Yep, I see you a lot on Facebook, Gene. I appreciate it. You like a lot of my stuff on my personal page. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. All right, bro. Um, waiting for football season. When does it start? That's my only right. comment. Oh, uh, you don't like baseball, John? I was about to say, yeah, I do, but, but the only play? time I watch baseball is the playoffs. That's that, is so wrong. that is so wrong. That is so wrong. But anyway, that is so wrong. But anyway. <laughs> Somebody got some, uh, baseball. Playoff baseball hey, is playoff baseball is so awesome. The Braves are gonna run with run away with that division. Am I right, John? Oh, yeah. Hell, hell yeah, I hope so. That's, that's for it sure. looks like it right now. That's for sure. Washington is is catching up, man, because they weren't they weren't doing good at all, and all of a sudden they're on a streak. May get the wild card, possibly. The Mets are garbage. I agree. That, that team yes. is great. And they like to hit people with the ball and they like to fight. All right. Hey, bring hey what other what, 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 what hey, what best way to bring people to the ballpark? We'll hit people, we'll hit batters with the ball and we'll fight. Come on to City Field and watch the Mets. But I Get shouldn't say on. that. I shouldn't really say that. Stop. That's wrong. That's wrong. I shouldn't say that because it's really the Mets been getting hit. I haven't, like I haven't even been watching them. I yeah, you kick somebody, them. you're kicking somebody when you're down. They're saying, well, the Mets been losing. Let's hit them while they're batting. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't right. That ain't right. And I I said, I said, boy, and the Angels aren't going to forget. The, Ain the, the, the Los Angeles Anaheim Angels are not going to forget what happened to Jonathan Lucroy. That was wrong. Yeah. He knows he put his shoulder into that man when he was sliding into to home plate. I said, oh. I I did. I was one of the six million people that did watch the All Star game last night. I, it was nothing on TV. I watched it, so I, I couldn't even do that, John. I, I put it on for a bit. I, I wasn't. I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, no, I can't watch those things. I can't watch those things. I know. Why I can't do you watch it because there's, there's no but There was nothing else on TV. It's like tonight, nothing else on TV. I'm gonna find me a movie on Netflix or. I'm curious why you don't like it, Ron, because it's not really a real game, right? Yeah, it's an exhibition. I don't really like these exhibitions, you know. Yeah, um, I I agree. It Everybody's doesn't matter just anymore. Smiling. There's there's no competition. Yeah, it doesn't just, matter anymore. It never did matter. They just go into well, maybe in the '60s it did, but it, it's not. But but, I, but in terms of you know. Whoever wins the All Star Game, you know, gets home field uh, advantage of the World Series. They took that not out. Even what, a that's not even a war yeah. anymore. not even Yeah, three years ago, I think they 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 got rid of that thing. Oh, you I know. didn't even know that. I didn't even yeah. know they took that away. So they took that yeah. away. So now nobody watches the All Star Game. So, so it's literally for nothing then. But what about it's still the, uh, the home best. Run? Did you guys watch that uh, home run? What's it called? I Derby. didn't watch the home run derby. Yeah, nah, I'm a you guys before. I would go lay in my street and let cars roll over me before I watched that. I, I didn't watch it. I was just curious if anyone else saw it. There's a lot of people have been talking about it. Yeah, I and can't. That, I, I and really. That, and then that's ESPN's outside of the NFL draft. That's one of their top highest rated programming, the Home Run Derby. The NFL draft, you know, yeah. all these other programs that they have. But that, you know, during the summer, that is one of their highest rated. You know, yeah, I guess I will watch, watch, like watch, watch roller derby before I watch the home run derby. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, all right. People say, "Oh, this video is going downhill." Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs>
John and Neil A., if you ever visit Louisiana, we can hang out and, and do beer reviews, or whatever, you know, and go shop or whatever. And Jean Pierre, same thing to you and, and anybody else. Southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, and uh, John, my uh, girlfriend <laughs> lives in uh, Brookhaven, like in Atlanta. If I'm ever down there and we hit up a brewery, you, should, you guys should come up and hang out. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool, man. I, I, there's a lot of really good breweries in Atlanta that I'm just, you know, looking forward to doing tours and checking out. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't definitely. mind. I wouldn't mind making a drive up there to Georgia to hang out with all of you guys. You well, know, maybe we can get a date one day. Yeah, uh, you'll have to friend me on Facebook. I don't think uh, I don't think we're friends on Facebook. Okay, I'll I'll friend you. And Same folks, thing with me, Brad. Wait. One and, and I'm glad you brought that up. One way you can meet up with us, you can meet up with us and talk about different things like beer, wine, and liquor, is you could join Alcohol Eggs on Facebook, and then you'll see us, you know, there, and then you could network with us and make a friend request if you want, and then then there's a way to interact. Al alcohol Eggs, I think y'all will agree with that, is a good. That's why I created it. It's a good kind of like common common area to talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and post uh, commercials of famous people like yeah, that as well. So you know what I mean? It's so convenient. And uh, we don't we don't have problems in there with drama and stuff because I don't allow it. Yeah. Orson <laughs> Welles is a great Orson Welles is a great pitch man than Carlo Rossi for his wines. <laughs> he was. He really was. And he did a I good saw that video. I saw that video you posted of him getting drunk before the commercial. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. I was rolling laughing when I seen that, man. <laughs> and then in the yeah, final cut, they just like they really took him out. Yeah, you must have drank a whole bottle of Carla Rossi before they. I mean, um, Paul Masson before they started recording. That was really comical. And the other two actors were looking at each other like, "What do we do?" I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but at, at the end, the, the end cut, they just like totally took him out. One they of the greatest like, films he ever put together, Citizen Kane, and like, wow, Orson Welles doing wine commercials. No wine is better than ahead of his time, whatever the damn phrase goes. No, know. we don't. We sell no wine before it's time. Yeah, yeah. Ronnie noticed. Ronnie noticed. The same that. guy that did War of the Worlds? Yeah, yeah. 1938. Yeah. And like Citizen Kane in 1941. Right? The film, yeah. Citizen Kane. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. He was famous. War of the Worlds. That was a famous radio uh, drama. Uh, all right. Well, um, that's it, folks. So next Wednesday, I think we'll do another Wildcard Wednesday. It might be on Eric's channel. Uh, time will tell, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, everybody take care. And I uh, want to thank again. I'm here in Louisiana, but want to thank again uh, Jean-Pierre from Alabama and uh, Brass Tax from Georgia and Ronnie S. from uh, Florida and John and Nilly from Georgia. So we got two Georgians today. And then uh, to represent the northeastern part of the United States, we got Jesse of Bumpy Road. Boo. Bumpy Road. <laughs> well, sign me a Bumpy Road. I need to follow you on, 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 on YouTube. So, okay. He's on there, John. He's on there, John. All right. Thanks, folks. Okay. God bless, guys. See you later. Don't worry. Nice. Bob Marley have a, great, have a good and safe evening. And if you want to watch a good album review of Gary Newman's Dance, I did it last night. All right. Okay.